She's a maniac, maniac of the whole. And I don't remember the words to the rest of the song. Brittany, is, <laughs> and, and she's dancing like she's never danced before. That's probably like one of like the most memorable songs. Whoops. Shame. Hi, guys. Shame. Okay, we did. Oh, hey, guys. Song, I feel like that song has so much to do with this freaking week for a lot of people because there has been a lot of dark shit that has happened over in not not thankfully nothing to us but there's a lot of people in my life that have been going through a lot of weird things and a lot of bad news happening to a lot of people yeah. some people not especially passing away some crazy fucking shit that uh you've yet to fill me on you know on you, you don't know them you don't know them otherwise no, I like to, i am a nosy bitch i want to know all the things okay, okay i'll tell you i'll tell you later yeah but um it's it's been a really rough week for a lot of people, a crazy um roller coaster, which is wild because when this is being recorded, it's uh July 5th. And at the start of this week, I remember um watching uh Instagram reel from Emily Dexter being like, This week is gonna be an emotional roller coaster. It'll be interesting to see, blah blah blah. And I was like, Oh, interesting. And I was like, I'll just keep that in the back of my head while this week continues. And then as this week has continued, I was like, Whoa, she was. Not that I had any doubts, Emily, if you're listening. Yeah. Not yeah. That, I've never doubted you. <laughs> never. I never. I always do. Like, you're, oh, pretty, oh. you're pretty much on the fucking mark every time. Exactly. And I was like, holy shit, has she ever just crushed it today? It's so. also the new moon tonight on the 5th. Is of it July. really? I was like, girl, are we doing this on the new moon tonight? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so lovely. Just a little heads up here. Because, I mean, again, when they when this is out, it'll be like, in a couple weeks but anyways um maybe reflect on like this time when that you listen to this oh. but it is acts as a cosmic reset encouraging reflection and intention setting mm-hmm. through rituals like intentionless meditation and cleansing uh it fosters oh. sorry energy fosters renewal with cancer influencing relationships and leo boosting creativity um oh. yeah so now's time for visualizing goals um going in with a clean slate for growth and transformation oh i like that well, that is nice. Um, cool. Yeah, it's just been a wild kind of week for a lot of people in this world. And hope hope everyone's doing okay and surviving okay out there. I know that shit is not easy. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like I don't even know. I'm like, where am I? What day is it? It's been one of those weeks where I've been told I look tired and I look oh, that's exhausted. So nice so yeah. nice of people to tell that i, I fucking love when people are that honest and love i'm like it. yeah i said you know when your eyes are like painfully open you know what i mean you're like i just need to go to bed <laughs> yeah. like that's where i was at at the time where it was like oh you look exhausted it was like i do you mean i do but Who said course, that? you said somebody at work or a stranger or what <laughs> one was not a stranger one was like a family member and then one was a person at work a girl that i work with which i mean she means well oh, oh you look really tired i was like <laughs> you're like hey hey oh that always, it's yeah. kind of you know i get it i totally understand why people say it because they're just like it's comes from a place of love but i'm like like you're girl. hurting my feelings <laughs> unless you're gonna offer me a nap and co- some coffee like you know yeah I know. would you mind going ready to grab me something then like i'm, like, I'm, I'm yeah. exhausted yeah exactly and like i bought some like under eye whatever those things are that you can like put under there like collagen things the collagen thing oh, um i'm like good i need i need some like deep puffy nice. yeah but my eyes have been so fucking mad again like my health yeah. journey just a quick recap. okay so i've been we sick. should do an update on jessica's health journey oh. shocker she has a shocker, ingestion so. in her once again exactly so uh i did oh my god what was i doing i don't even know what i was doing i was doing naturopath yeah, i was cool. on the candida diet which proved to be very good so i'm happy about that and then i started doing homeopath so then i pulled dairy out of my diet again very beneficial there but i still was congested so the dairy and whatever was not a sorry the congestion was not a result of the dairy so we had to determine that to make sure um that was more like of a digestive health kind of thing anyways so then he gave me some like silica tablets is what they call them and i took three one one per week so it was like on a thursday night and whatever anyways so i did oh. that for three weeks and actually like felt so good i'm not yeah. kidding you. not not during the first two weeks it was like until the third was in my system do you know what i mean and then i was like i could go to sleep and i could breathe 
Like right now I have to like lay on my right side and then I can drain my left side and I'll be like, I can breathe. So yeah. So what's the plan with silica long-term? What does that mean? Well, I go back to my homeopath on Monday. So, and I'm going to be like, dude, whatever's in that, hit me up, dude. And I need some whatever more. that tincture is there, medicine. Is, whatever you <laughs> need, just keep it no. coming. But yeah, so I mean, I, it, which is good. Like I said, it's it's great to feel to know that I can feel good here, right? Because I was like, oh shit, is there yeah. something in the house? Like, but like, okay, yeah. like again, like I was feeling good, was able to breathe without like. Yeah. I mean, my voice isn't too bad right now, but it sounds very like I don't want to say flummy. I hate that word, but I know like and Morgan, I'm sorry if you're listening, honey. Like. I know you hate this. Just a little um, quick shout out. Shout out to sorry, Mo. Exactly. Mo does not. He'll be tuning out now, actually. Um, but no, it's uh sometimes it sounds like very lingy easily or whatever. And like it's kind of like half and half right now. So apologies eternally because yeah. And that's still like well, what do you do? At least you have like at least there after everything that you've gone through for a while, the ongoing joke, which I'm sure I have shared on this podcast many yeah. times. Is that she's just allergic to Ireland? Because no. I'm like, well, nothing's changing. And I was like, well, if there's a, yeah. if this is a thing that actually is working for you, exactly. Then, it's a, yeah. the first thing to move the boulder. Let's just say that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, finally, exactly. I'm like, oh my God, there's some relief. Okay, whatever it was, let's continue. So, anywho, well, so that's so- my health life is just like rocking and rolling. That's it. So, that's I it. Think- I look like shite, but it's sort of for people who are like watching. <laughs> They're like, well, what's actually, you know what? I should even say that. Like, I always look the same, so it's fine. Curly hair, I don't, don't care. care. I've got like a, what would you call this? It's like a tail. It's, it's also like tail. 11 o'clock at night to your time. So you're allowed to look however you want to look. When it's 10 o'clock. Park. I have no idea. <laughs> it would be interesting to see for like a quick poll um, for how many people watch the YouTube versus on just audio when you're in your vehicle or cleaning yeah. your house, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What do you um, do? When you, when you listen to us literally banter about God knows what. Yeah. What is your gem? What is easier for you? Do you Tell want to sit the there things. and look like you're having a cup of coffee with us? Or, cup of cup of, which we have. or do you like to listen to us just bullshit in the background as if you're driving in the car together? <laughs> exactly. exactly. We'll be like the distraction, you know, they probably don't need where you're driving. Because when it comes to um, podcasting, or sorry, listening to podcasts on my end, my favorite, my favorite time to listen to podcasts where I can actually pay attention enough is, um, while I'm driving. Oh, I yeah. love it in the background. Yeah. I love it in the background. Yeah. Um, when it comes to walks, I just can't do it because there's too much happening with either with the baby or the dogs or whatever. I'm like, now nah, I can't, I'm going to miss something that I want to listen to, but in the car, that is my jam. But where do you listen to your most, your podcast typically? Typically, I guess if I were to like rank it in terms of use, um, my first one would be when I'm cleaning. Like I like, I like to have like, I set my brain to autopilot. Do I mean? And I just put that. So I have that as my like, whatever that's, that's whatever. And then I can work with my hands. If it's doing dishes, if it's doing laundry, it's kind of like, I I like to work both sides of my brain at the same time, which I do suspect is ADHD. But I don't know. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Okay. I'm like, is that? We are all on the spectrum of something, but it's hard to say but which like, one is which. Of course. I'm like, am I that bothered? Not really. I don't know. If, I don't know. Anyways, we'll cross that bridge when. If anything ever celebrated, celebrated, I'd be like, oh, fuck yeah. There's there's a reason. Oh. I figured out that function. But anyways, so um, cleaning, definitely. Driving, yes, I enjoy it. But my children don't let me do that right now. We're in that phase of. Oh. that they are the DJs of my car and currently yeah. we're listening to everything is awesome that's like the Lego <laughs> world or Lego <laughs> movie I have heard that song once or twice yeah I have it memorized Brittany like I, I bet you do Jeff, you have every song me- memorized that, that there ever and ever I was gonna say I'm like it really that's no surprise like of course it's memorized but like and, so and when I'm welcome driving, back to the circle back of ADHD, ADHD <laughs> exactly oh yes hello again oh wow <laughs> nice to see you <laughs> Okay. Sorry. And yeah. then the third spot I like, to, I do like to listen to them on my walks. Um, but when I go I on my walks, it's like late at night out on the path here and like with the dog and oh. it's dark typically. I mean, I know that sounds like, why would you do that? It's but then so I nice. don't have, that's so nice though. I just, I don't have children distracting me. Rosie is like so self-sufficient on her walks. We don't leash her out here. Cause we're like out in the middle of nowhere. Right. Yeah, don't need to. So she's got her little yeah. nest on her little like high vis and I got my high vis. Do, do you have your headphones in or do you just like listen and like just have it going? No, I have one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I don't listen with both in because 
it's still like Danger. people are shitty out there so but well, yeah. yeah although there's some yeah. podcasts that I like adore right like like morbid and whatever the ones that get a little spooky at times yeah. I'm like Whoa, too much you know so oh well when you're walking alone in the dark yeah for sure there <laughs> I I have gotten addicted to a couple lately and uh, it's so funny because like I'm I'm into this is totally derailing the whole episode but yeah, it is whatever. what it is <laughs> There's been, there's been so many different ones lately that I'm like, oh God, like if you like a good, like little mini fictional story, that's no longer than like 30 minutes. Sometimes it's like mm-hmm. half an hour. Sometimes it's 15 minutes, et cetera. It's called the antiquarium of sinister happenings. It's all fiction. It's crazy as fuck. Every episode is so different. And, um, and then there's, what is the other one? It's called heart starts pounding. I listen to quite a bit and the haunted detective. That's my, my new one. Every season is like a deep dive into like one certain thing. And so I've been like intensely listening to all those, but then I, but then I have my really light and fluffy ones. Like, um, hello from Angela, uh, sorry, Angelina from Jersey shore or the meatball pod from Jersey shore. And then I also have like weird and proud from Sam, oh, I can't remember her last name, but Sam and James, and they are so fucking funny. It's the girl that I've sent an Instagram video to you Jessica before because this is like the type of girl that I would love for a brother to like meet because they would <laughs> he needs to meet someone who's so fucking weird that's like on our level weird. exactly like yeah. that's in his own level do you know I mean but like and he's like he's more norm I would say he's yeah, like, like the most normal in our family <laughs> probably the most normal person in our family, which is kind of scary <laughs> yeah no he's like probably he's, the most normal. Matthew's also like super goofy it's just you just appropriately goofy though do you know what I mean yeah like, we're, needs like, to, like, pull up yeah. we're fried in the yeah. brain that's what it is it's, it's, like... <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing what we come out with and Matt he doesn't how do I put this he burned me so good the other day and I can't remember how he did it but even Ryan's like oh, look at him and I was like well it's about time it's only took it, a, yeah, take it 30, years to do 30 years old it's about time you got one in <laughs> exactly i'm like i accept that i'm not coming back with anything i'm really proud of you <laughs> but yeah, anyway so that's one of the podcasts that i listen to because they are so crazy the sam and james instagram reels are so fucking funny because it's this girl she's known from the guinness book of records for having the biggest mouth so she will like when she eats a sandwich or anything her mouth is so insane <laughs> but she's also a comedian and like holy shit she just makes me laugh so she does a lot of like stitched videos where people are doing really hilarious no I shouldn't say hilarious they're doing these really intricate gymnastics moves or these dance moves and then she's like oh James oh yeah oh yeah okay okay god I love it fuck but I love a good laugh though like I love a good hearted laugh especially when I need to um level myself out from listening to something super dark <laughs> and now that you like mentioned like the oh James like I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about I sent you like 15 yeah like, reels in a row because I was like she, you have to be laughing at this with me she has a huge mouth so that's yes she does because she does she's in, like, the world. interesting pardon so, and she does like enunciate like I'm like yeah and it's what, like, it's just, there anyway, she's so cool. I freaking yeah. Anyway, their, their podcast is super cool. fun because James doesn't talk or have any expression in any of their Instagram reels, but in their podcast, it's so wild to see them banter. And then he has like James science corner. Anyways, this has ho- gone off the fucking rails. I'm so, so sorry. Those are other podcasts you could listen to, but since you're here, yeah. <laughs> that's the one that the we would recommend if you around, want something you know? also to add to your repertoire <laughs> yeah, exactly once you're all caught up with us then you can move on I suppose but come back you know um so yeah so Brittany and I were chatting about like what we wanted to talk about today and like I was kind of just like I feel like every time we you know approach our recording I'm like what should we talk about like what what am I interested in right now yeah. and I mean, we've definitely tossed this idea around a little bit. Um, so yeah. it's kind of nice to like deep dive, not even deep dive. It really just hit the surface. But again, ADHD, yeah. it's like I hit the surface and then I was like, oh, and I segued. So uh, next I week's episode <laughs> will be great. I'm so excited. So this will kind of lead into that. Um, which I will, I can, I will reference what will be happening in the next episode, kind of like as we go on into the episode, but, um, yeah. So I guess first things first, um, forgive me for any pronunciations. <laughs> oh um, yeah. But like, they're not here for correct pronunciation. Exactly. I know they're not. Um, what else is I going to say? I guess 
of course, like everything, this is all like by word of mouth. Um, I'm really leading up the suspense, don't I? Nothing can be in this area can be proven fact because there's always going to be something else. But essentially, we are going to be discussing what you might call the book of spells, a magic book, a spell book, or a book of shadows, a book of shadows or a grimoire. Or grimoire. A grimoire. So um yeah. So Brittany, you know a little bit about that. Like what what are your first thoughts when you hear those words? Well, the first thoughts when I think Book of Shadows, Grimoire, mm-hmm. all that fun stuff is the uh well, Sabrina's teenage, the teenage witch or charmed, because they reference the book where they go for any type of charms or smell or smells, spells to help them do what they need to do next. And it's interesting that we bring up this topic because it wasn't in last year when I was like, Jessica, I want to make my own. Yeah. I want to make my own book of shadow. So I'm, I, it's going to take some time because I've got too much on the go right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I've got this beautiful library of books that I just keep buying that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to research that. And I'm going to pull what I want. I'm going to create all these things. And I haven't even touched it. Everything That's like a so. whole job that you're describing though. Do you know what I mean? And like, you already have like a lot of those. So I have a bunch of jobs. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a bunch so of jobs. one day, but like, but you know, what's wild is since Jessica and I have created a bunch of oils, anointment oils, those are spells. We have created a base of our certain spells already. Exactly. We've already built that chapter cool. kind of. Yeah. No, exactly. Well, you're definitely like, you got it right. So it is, um, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to just start at the beginning here, the originating of the word. Let's start with the word itself. So it is a word, uh, deriving from a French word grammaire, um, which is, I guess, French for the word grammar. So now back in, this was like, I guess prior to the 1800s, any word, any, any book that was written in Latin, was described Mm -hmm. as a grimoire um and now that was just kind of the term of use here now that could be um it could be described as like either hard to read hard to understand it was kind of in that realm prior to 1801 now the reason that there was a shift come in 1801 is when we see that word go into a different practice so the word was finally or was first published in terms of use towards magical books uh, and that was set in the book it's called the magus the Magus by Francis be- uh, Bennett. Yeah, Francis Bennett. I wrote it down. Double check. Barrett. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Barrett. Um, so, um, which is where I kind of segued. But anyways, so um, starting in that book is where we see it kind of take that transition from, again, grimoire, all bo- books written in Latin or hard to understand, to then only being referenced to books of magic and fulfilling magic or you know described with magic um so yeah. interesting like again as we kind of dive into that book specifically um we do see that um like that first book the magus was not a point of reference but it was almost like a collection of all the previous authors and alchemists and astrologers and philosophers um that was kind of like the first um not encyclopedia, but like a first gathering of all of them. Like a textbook. A textbook exactly. Of like from a bunch to... of different, exactly. From a bunch of different, like, I want to say revenues of, of information. Anyway, so that was the first collection of that. And that's again, where that work came from. So yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. When I started digging into Francis Bennett, a Barrett, um, is kind of where I stumbled upon another person who is going to be on our podcast next week. Um, so when we have Chris on, we can kind of fully discuss, you know, a little bit more in terms of that. Um, but it is a book that I'm going to add to my wants list, I think, just to kind of see and feel it out here. Now, um, that book specifically was published in 1801. And then again, it wasn't published again until 1875. So it's only been published like really a couple of times. Um, a digital copy is probably what I'm after. So anyways, that's probably, Um, well, do you have a Kindle or a tablet or anything you could get? No, because my iPad's still MIA and... I'm slow on the tick, but we think, we think we know where it is. I still think she has it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> At this point, it's been a year and a half. When will, <laughs> when will the joke die? That's all I'm saying. It's like, is it, funny <laughs> still? Is it a joke? Really no, just... Is it a joke? <laughs> okay. So um, who, who uses these kind of books, right? So again, this kind of the grimoire. So it'd be um, people, ceremonial magicians. It could be, I guess, again, 
you know, many people of different types and walks of life could use these books. Um, they are thinking that this originated like this form of not methodology, but again, prior to the Magus, I uh, kind of, I can't even think today. This is obviously my brain is on like a sleep mode here. Um, so near, so um, excited to get the information out too. You're like, ah, exactly. ah. they're, they're saying that like the first form of written magic or like, again, this book of spells originated in what was then called the ancient near East, which would be today's middle East. It's kind of where all of that started to originate. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I guess from that, from different religions, and we see that in like the Jewish faith, we see it in the Egyptian faith, we see it in, you know, all over that areas of different ways and different methodologies that they were kind of prescribing and transcribing their rituals. So again, right. a grimoire is a book of spells. Now it is set yeah. with instructions on how to create magical items such as spells, talismans, sigils, um, how to perform divination, communication, either that be summoning or invoking the spirits, good or bad. Um, so that is the how to. Um, and when I was researching this and actually prior to that, even last week, I was like, oh God, there's there's a lot of levels to my work that I do privately, but I'm like, oh, I just yeah. need like, a book. I'm like, oh my God, I need like a procedure manual. <laughs> Yeah, literally, that's what you will create eventually. Literally, exactly. And I'm like, oh, I need to do that. I was like, oh, I can do that for many forms of my life. And there would be great success in it. Again, kind of sharing the knowledge through step-by-step -step progress. We love that. Exactly. Um, but now, of course, the book isn't just what it contains. It's what the book is. So when people are putting together their books, it's like they're anointing the papers. They're they're writing it with intention so that then the book itself is also magical, not just the, the words on the paper. The words of the right. people will, will give you the steps to do it, but the book itself has then become a magical piece. That's what a lot of these, you know, magicians of sorts are, you know, kind of saying that, that that's what they have come to be. So. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I feel like you definitely should make yourself a procedure manual or like a witchy manual. Oh, for of some sure. Kind. That yeah. way you have all of your, your wonderful things in one. Yeah. Like, well, one spot and then that way like when we take what did we take the candle magic or the alchemy class or whatever and we lost your duty <laughs> it's like we lost, lost all... it found it now right but well no, you did find like, it i have them now but yeah no it's definitely like again it's on my list of things but you know what i think it's it's all about the intention and i think i have to carve out the time to dedicate to do it yeah. i mean just like anything which like exactly. there's only 24 hours in the day which is shit Exactly. But you know what, in the week's time there, like even like today, getting the episode ready for tomorrow, it was like, yeah. oh, Maria's asleep. I have a few minutes. I could like sit on my phone and do fuck all. I'm like, or I could do the, you know, I could do the, the episode and it was so nice and refreshing. I got to listen to it. I'm like, oh, this is so good. So it was really nice to kind yeah. of reserve the time for that. Yeah, so I that's feel like totally. that'll come with that as well. But um, yeah. I was going to say here now in terms of when magic and like the references to it began that uh -huh. is a very fascinating thing to me so i found there was okay uh pliny the elder who was a roman uh philosopher naturalist and an author he kind of theorizes and this is again this is a theory this isn't like fact or stone right um he said right. that there was um, a philosopher named zoroaster who um, I believe he he's an ancient philosopher anyways. I'm not too certain. I think he's Persian. Um, he first okay. discovered magic in 1647 BC. Good God. Yeah, so that All would right. be discovery, you know, of such things, right? Um, but wow. now, of course, in terms of writing them down, we saw those much later in, in the time whereas they weren't written down until about the fifth century. And again, which is funny. Can I pause you for like a hot yeah, second? Do. It's funny how they say discovery of magic BC as if Christianity was just like, so on board with well, they say BC before I know, but like, that's, that's one thing that like life that's what doesn't make a lot of sense to me, right? We're like, wait, <laughs> but like that's, that's how everything is written is BC or AD. Right. So it'd be, that's true. You're right. Yeah right it's so. just so funny that i'm like what <laughs> yeah so anyways that was my biggest chunk of information and i just felt like oh my gosh like, there's so much information here um i think yes. where, where i'm going next with my you know research is going right into the yeah. magnus um again we're gonna have a chat with chris and we're gonna see what yeah. francis barrett really had um kind of collected because you know we had discussed in last season 
some of the like not authors but other philosophers that we or not philosophers but like people of magic that we want yeah, to yeah. talk about right and he's getting yeah. a lot of that stuff from them he's getting them from john d he's getting them from um who else Zorcaster. we're getting them from all over the map so i'm like okay so there's those names throwing around again so i think it'd be worth diving in and seeing what kind of information is there so well and i feel like we covered this the last season as well but i can't remember exactly because it was just like re-sparked in my brain in a podcast episode that i just listened to but how we have talked about previous alchemists and everything and how nicholas flamel was an actual real person and a real exactly. alchemist exactly yeah yeah like which is crazy how he was used then so much in all these different movies and we just yeah. assumed he was a created character where we're like, you're like oh, what? what exactly no i think oh. there's there's so much more that again this is like the back end information of a lot of this but i think it's definitely um worth checking out i'm just gonna bring it up here and mm -hmm. so the magus barrett's book um just so oh yeah so i'm not gonna read off of what this is because that's plagiarism but i guess this is a plagiarism because i'm not writing it down i don't know okay so it's a compilation of works derived from certain other ones right so zoracaster Her uh, hermes Apollonitis, Simon of the Temple, uh, Trimetheus, Agrippa, who we've talked about, uh, Porta, the Neapolitan, John D, um, Pericles, Roger Bacon, and many great others. I like the name. It's so, Roger, so Bacon. Funny. Roger Bacon. Also, hold on, because when I was in my research and I was going to like text you, like, oh my God, I should send her this article and see if she like recognizes anything. But um, this is like what the page is about. <laughs> Previous demonologists, such as Binsfeld, 1589, had drawn up lists that comprised of the hierarchy of devils and attributed them to the power to instigate people to commit the seven deadly sins. In this list, Lucifer is, is associated with pride, Satan with anger, and so forth. The Magus Barrett altered the roster of devils, um, or the Magus, sorry, of, from Barrett. The roster of devils and Satan now became the prince of the uh, deluders. But I was like, I'm sorry. Previous demol demonologist Binsfeld. Was that's, that a last name or first name? That's I don't know. It's not. It's not. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. Oh. Okay, so there was in this article there was a reference to the name Binsfeld, which is a family name of ours. And now I'm just gonna it's read so off what um, it says here. Oh God, I jumped away from the page. Previous demonologists such as Binsfeld, hmm, 1589. Mm -hmm had drawn up lists that comprised of the hierarchy of devils and attributed them to the power to the power to instigate people to commit the seven deadly sins. So Lucifer was associated with pride, Satan with anger, and then so forth. So in the Magus written by um, Francis Barrett, the roster of devils is kind of um, not shuffled a little bit, but it was altered. And now that's kind of what we follow, like kind of what uh, so cool. the Magus laid out. In. But now back to Binsfeld, it's... um oh my gosh <laughs> okay a little bit on peter binsfeld because i'm really now i'm like holy shit oh my god okay so peter binsfeld yes. um, was a german auxiliary bishop and theologian peter a son okay. of a farmer and craftsman was born in the village of binsfeld in the rural eiffel region located in the modern states oh uh, i can't read this because it's like <laughs> hard to say um, he died in Trier as a victim of the bubonic plague. Nice. Oh, wow. Bitsfeld grew up in the predominantly Catholic environment in the Eiffel region. So, but now, um, he was a German as well. So, but I'm like, wow. Holy that, that is wildly, I have so many questions, but now think about the time period as well, though. This is like the 15, what did I say? 1500s, 1540 to 15 to 1603. Like, I mean, he was about 60 when he passed, I believe, but I have lots no. That's a lot of time to have kids or. But also like, oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, sorry. In 1589, he published an influential list of demons and associated sins. Okay, so this is his list that was then altered by Francis Barrett. Keep that in mind. But this was the yes. original kind of what people went by up until the publication of 1801, right? Keep that in mind. So um, Lucifer was pride. Mammon was greed. I don't know who Mammon is. Mammon looks like, um, I'm just going to name the. From the New Testament. Okay. It's like really scary, actually. Greed was a seven. What do you say? I said, I'm so excited. Yeah. 
Okay. Ash, Ash, Ashmedidi, Ash, Ashmeday, Ashmeday. Sorry. Ashmeday, Ashmeday. I shouldn't say it three times. That's I stopped myself right there. You are hilarious. Just yeah, no, welcome, no. welcome something silly in your home that you exactly. didn't need. Leviathan was envy. I don't even like Leviathan. That's Leviathan. Leviathan. Okay, that's envy. And then bees, Beezlebum. Mm, I know you know what it is. But is gluttony. Satan is wrath. And Belphegor is Bel sloth. That's Belzebar. Belzebar. Yeah, this. Oh my God. That's scary. But like only, again, this is this is what Hollywood does. But to you me. know, it's interesting that you say that, Jessica, because like, um, we, you know, as we talked about in our episode with Jason. Yeah. Um, yes, a lot of the darker mm -hmm. demonic names mm -hmm. are scary however lutherism or is that how i said it yeah lutherism oh. or Lutheran you know, Lutheran there are so Lutheran many Lutheran. layers luciferism oh sorry that's it yeah that's, um there's so <laughs> many layers to then use yeah. like a lot of good yes yeah so, so yes yeah, some of these are yeah pretty scary considering what that type of entity can do exactly but yeah. I mean, he, anyways, this, this specific person sounds like he's, um, you know, I like anti-witchcraft, but also like into the hell side of things. Do you know what I mean? Like damn those for considering this anyways. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh yeah. To quote Hermione, fear of a name only increases the fear of the thing itself. So that's where exactly. we have that. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Don't be scared, Jesse. Don't be scared. I won't be scared. I won't be scared. A shot today. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, I don't even know. I probably blew through that information, but I was like, you know, when you get nervous and you're excited and you're like, oh, I got all those things. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and it's it's good that you brought that up because I, I actually do feel that we should actually talk. Like, I know that you don't really like to talk about a lot of the dark stuff, but I think there's so much information there that we're not bringing anything dark into this podcast, but the information of knowing yeah. about the no, certain, exactly. you know, names that you had just mentioned, it would be really neat to kind of do an episode on more of that to be like, well, why, where did they come from? You know, I, I do agree with you. And I think especially from our, you know, our previous episode with Jason, when we're kind of, you know, discussing the light within the dark and the dark within the light, like you have to have both to exist. Right. And I think, yeah knowledge is power right and it's all about the oh, notion of where it's coming from and and defeating that fear right because it's it shouldn't be scary it's real world things a lot of yeah. the time right so no i do i think that's fair to say we might go there this season see what we it would be fun to do that because then i also feel like we should do like a deep dive on a lot of like archangels that we haven't actually talked about and like specific ones as well like so will you take some from the light some from the dark exactly. and we create yeah. episodes based on like what a little bit more of like where they had come from to cr be created to where they are right or um in this world and um what then people would use them for we use their energy for yeah yeah if that's no. something that interests you I, I, I think i think it's important and like you know when you get your bodily you know when you're listening to your body like obviously my my heart is like mm. But I don't get the tug to say no. And usually when it's a no, it's a no. Like I always say, like, no, I don't yeah. I don't want to do that. I was like, no, this is well, it, for me, it's always a full body fuck yes or a full body fuck oh, no. no. <laughs> exactly. But no, when, when, when we're discussing like things, I'm like, I don't know if it fits. Usually I'm just like, no. This is what I'm like, okay, no, I can I can dive in this realm because it's relevant and people are curious and i don't think that this would be a bad thing to I me mean, it's not like we're again we're not invoking we're not summoning anything it's like general knowledge no we'll clean it's just face. knowledge exactly we'll send that out that's kind hand. of our that's our full basis of our podcast is um providing information and mm -hmm. community and all that fun stuff to be like mm -hmm. it's all good it's all good exactly yeah so but yeah, so I'm it. really looking forward to kind of the episodes to come here. Um, yeah. If you have any questions for him, oh my gosh, just in regards to any of this stuff here. Um, hold on. I don't know. I don't know where I put any of my notes here. But anyways, um, so this will be coming out on, sorry, his episode will be on the 20th of July. So that's going to be coming here. His name is Christopher Warnock. So he's an author. Again, he, he, um, 
he he does readings and stuff as well. We'll give you some more details once we see him. But if you've got any, I would say, honestly, general questions. Um, I know it's yeah. hard because I'm not giving you too much information on him because I want him to kind of give us a little bit too. Um, yeah. but my kind of questions and my styles are going to be about, you know, his, his thoughts on the Magus and, you know, what it represents in today's culture, as well as how much of it we can really look back on and still use, right? Again, it being like a book of magic, but like I have, you know, how to make them, how do you find them? You know, especially when the things like this don't, aren't publicized really. Exactly. So that's kind of where well, my, my questions will be more on the personal side of just like, Finally, where on life starts earth is this from? Exactly. Like, yeah. Why, why are you the way that you are? <laughs> yeah. So, but if you've got any questions, by all means, guys, send them in. We gladly ask. Yeah. Um, we'll be seeing him before the pod, but after this pod. So mm-hmm, just, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, so that should be really exciting. I'm, I'm really, I feel good about that interview. It's coming. So yeah. yeah, I feel good about a lot of our entries that are going to be coming. We are going to have like a really good blended season coming up where there's going to be a lot of, uh, just Jessica and I with y'all. And then there will be a good chunk of um, interviews thrown right in there. We'll sprinkle. Well, well I was going to so. say, like the first season was all us, really. The second season was the season of interviews. That's what we called it, right? We wanted to get like yeah. people in. So I think now it's yeah. going to be like, you know, what we've done with that information and how we're going to pull it forward. Um, but if you've got any- And that way too, we can deep dive to previous episodes that we now have the more time to actually focus on. Exactly, yeah. So if you've got any requests, just let us know. Again, um, we're looking to build our repertoire. Um, yeah, cool. Well be yeah. Our magic community of all the things, magic all the things and all the people because there's just so much to explore. Exactly, yeah. Man, oh so, man. Before so- we- Close out. Ready for a card pull there, Jessica? I'm so ready for a card pull. I wonder which deck you're going to use today. I, I wonder. Vanda. I Vanda, which one? I Vanda. You've never seen that a fish called Wanda, have you? No. You no. Don't. So good. That's what happened, right? For those who are like listening that have, like, good on you. I Wanda. <laughs> I Wanda. Anyway, great. Sorry about the. I'm just going to mute my thing while I shuffle it really quick if you want to. Okay, sounds good. So I have pulled from the, I I decided that this season I'm going to pull from a a completely different deck every episode. I don't even know if I have 40 decks, but we're going to find out. So I have the Magic of Unicorns for this one. I had blurred my background um, if you're watching on YouTube because my office is a fucking disaster because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. And I can't close the, gra- the garage door. I can't close the door. And- the garage door. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't want you to see all that because I don't even want to see it. So um, anyways, Magic of Unicorns is the deck that I chose from Diana Cooper. And the card that had fallen out was the Pool of Christ Light. Open your heart, spread unconditional love. So I, I really like that. That's awesome. So let's see as our deep dive has to say. It's a beautiful unicorn around these beautiful flowers by the water. Wow. The moon there, which is kind of nice considering it's the new moon. New moon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Do I fit? So then by the time this day, it should be the full moon. I'm just seeing. Hold on. Well, which will be amazing as well. Is that mathing which right? Is that right? Is that right? July, full moon. Sorry, I got to like look it up. You know me. I do. Yeah. Oh, Sunday, July 21st. Oh, fancy that. That's great. Wait, I have no well, idea. There you yeah, go. Right? There so this will be, yeah, it'll be tomorrow, dudes. It's called the Buck Moon. No. Sorry, Bernie, go ahead. <laughs> no, Jessica, no. The 20th is when Chris's podcast will come out. No. Is that right? I don't know. No. Okay. Anyways. Wait. No. Sorry. Anyways, the pool of Christ light. (laughs) This is a card of transcendent love. For Christ light is pure source love that flows from the Godhead at a diamond white frequency. Unicorns carry it in their energy fields and bring it down on a golden ray through white gold, then gold to a level where you can access it. Christ light can heal at a cellular level. It can dissolve blocks in your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual fields and replace them with love. It can bring you peace and great joy and raise your frequency to the ninth dimension. It can also, sorry, it is also a powerfully protective energy. In our universe, great pools of Christ light are held. Um, I'm not, okay. 
in Lacume, a part of Sirius that has ascended. Ask your unicorn to take you there in a meditation or sleep to bathe in the wondrous energy. This fills your spirit with love. You see with eyes of love. You hear and talk with love and your heart glows. You radiate love. Your guidance is to breathe in the Christ light and practice seeing, hearing, and communicating with love. So that way, sorry, so that you live in a Christed way. Your unicorn is asking you to radiate the divine energy to other people, places, and situations. For this will also make a significant, significant difference to them. It will also accelerate your ascension and bring you closer to your unicorn. <clears throat> so, yeah, the affirmation is just like, I radiate Christ light. So it's very much more of a, let's say, religious card. Well, yeah, but also like... Whenever, I, yeah. Go whenever on. cards talk a lot about, maybe that's just a me thing, me being uncomfortable. A bit gaudy, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit, I don't know, maybe it's just because there's so much trauma with the Catholic Church. So I was like, Ugh, I don't love I that. that. was, you know what? But, you pull the deck though. I'm glad you did, right? That's good. I'm too. And the thing is with the deck, with that, the bottom line of that deck is what I'm feeling is just like you, it's time just to open your heart up to love and like speak it, feel yeah. it, think it, do it. Yeah. I was like, as you're like talking, <clears throat> I was like, you know, as you do, as you write and whatever else here, because it was like the pool of light is what I got. Obviously the diamond yeah. white light, the higher frequency, love and protected love. That's, those are the words that I got from that. Right. So it's like, yeah. okay, if I can radiate, I always say like my little like crown of protection or my veil yeah. of protection, yeah. it's like an effervescent, beautiful, delicious, sparkly wonderful thing and that's kind of what I was like okay like sending that forward and like spreading nice. my love and protection do you know what I mean so if it's just like wrapping my veil around whoever needs it at the time like that's that's what resonated yeah. with me through that even though because I was like nice. god I shouldn't say god Jesus it's the Jesus that got me it's the Christ. Jesus. it's the Christ it's not god it's the Jesus it's the Jesus it's the Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I'm sorry guys I'm sorry we lost you I, I feel like every every episode we're like emotional and um catholic trauma <laughs> church trauma <laughs> which is so funny because it's so unnecessary but it is what it is anyways your car <laughs> anyways off we go um okay let's see here okay Ooh, i got the moth Ooh. first um first thoughts of course when i think of moths is like dust off you know what i mean like well i'm gonna wake up a bit so and funny. get your like, get out of here what just because one of her biggest fears are moths i hate moths yeah but no before I even read it but yeah when I like when I think of the moth I do think of like okay get the dust off your shoulders and like warm up nice. the muscles and get working again is kind of what it feels like yeah. oh I, like I hate moths so much Blech. why did you even have to say it <laughs> you said it so many times you're, 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 you're like Jessica doesn't like moths I was like no okay also, triggered triggered <laughs> literally speaking of trauma the tick moth or whatever that you and Ryan do Blech. okay oh my god zoo, zoo, zoo. yeah <laughs> okay so anyways the moth ha -ha. oh yeah no, obviously i'm reading from kim cran's my animal spirit because she you know she, because she I is one and the only okay should i do a dramatic reading for you yes the moth is sure the grass is greener on the other side moth energy is at play when we're attracted to easy solutions or anything shiny and new this can lead to unfinished projects, disappointment, or burnout. Right. It's helpful to remind moth personalities that life is complex. No matter the illusion, no one is exempt from the trials and tribulations of this great journey. Practice seeing life as an infinite mystery rather than wishing it was easier or different. When you're in balance, enthusiastic, whimsical. When you're out of balance, idealizes others or jittery to bring into balance visit, finish a project my my i'm not very good at dramatic readings because i'm like this isn't a poem we're like snapping fingers and like trauma it's <laughs> not um no you're doing, you're doing great you did great um <laughs> so like, yeah, what, are you doing? Too. what a weird episode we just did <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to our shit <laughs> guys guys 
That's good. Yeah, we made it to season three. And if you did too, then wow. Welcome We're back. here together. We've grown over the last three years, literally. We have figuratively. Yeah. We have yeah. it's it's been a wild, a wild time. Wild. But no, it's interesting too. Like starting a project, sorry, finishing a project is a good um message there because how many people get inspired with spring and summer with creating all these beautiful projects and they're like I'm bored I'm tired and I actually like literally I don't know if people on YouTube have been like she just was like I was like oh it's because they were talking about like we've got oh I want to do all this stuff but I don't have the time to do it exactly. and actually as we're talking I'm like we want to start, and as we're doing it I'm just like oh the book oh here we go look at shadows I have a plan for the wall behind me it's like this art piece do and- you Half of it's over there. It's a stick I got from, it's a bogwood piece I pulled out of the lake and d- dried and stained myself. Nice. And nice. I, anyways, I'm like planning, but I'm like, oh, I should finish that. I literally think about that. I'm like, yeah, I know. My moth energy. Well, and it's funny because like right before, as I said, I was blurred this out. My project is going to be this, this room that I'm in my office. Yeah. I'm going to paint the walls. I'm going to put up my art. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be something. Well, when we're in balance, damn it, when we finish that first project, we're going to be enthusiastic as hell and we're going to be our beautiful, whimsical little creatures that we are. Exactly. Uh, uh, Beautiful little butterflies, not moths. Get away from me with that mock. I'm a miles away for you. Anyways, I'm sorry. Anyways. You guys have no idea. (laughs) You have no idea. I've cried. I've cried over less things, Brittany. I know you have, Jess. God. Okay, so where can they find us? Well, guys, you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at Basic Bantiful Witches, or you can email us all of your, like I said, suggestions, like we said earlier, questions, um, whatever you need at Basic for Witches at gmail.com. Woo-hoo! And don't forget the anonymous card pull of the month. Yes. You know what? You I even put it. I put it in our show notes. It's in our show notes, guys. You don't even have to do it. If you're, if you're on Apple Pods or whatever the hell you're listening to, if you go into the show notes, right. you can click on it and it'll take you right there. So please do. It's so accessible. I love that. Um, I hope that that works even better for more. Yeah. Not that we we don't, it's not that we don't have lots, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like, well, I feel bad. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to do it because it's going to, I have to go to their Instagram and then I got to click on this link and then I got to go. Well, no, you know, you already listened to us. Yep. You just go. And I'm going to put it in the show notes on YouTube too. So just do it. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay, well, we're very, we're happy to be back. We're happy to be in the midst of the chaos, and we're yep. we're excited to do all the chaotic things with y'all. Mm-hmm. So we love y'all, and we'll see you next week. Better. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Bye now.